Python. Chapter 1, The Hero and the Princess. You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. Killing the princess seems kind of bad though, doesn't it? Does it? Are you a monarchist? Is slaying a princess that much worse than slaying a fisherman or a miller or a seamstress? If anything, slaying a princess is much better than slaying a seamstress. Seamstresses contribute something of value to society. Silently continue to the cabin. You make your way up the short path to the cabin. You'll find the princess within. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. We're not going to go through with this, right? She's a princess. We're supposed to save princesses, not slay them. Ignore him. He doesn't know what he's talking about. The interior of the cabin is almost entirely bare. The air is stale and musty, and the floor and walls are painted in a fine layer of dust. The only furniture of note is a plain wooden table. Perched on that table is a pristine blade. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It'd be rather difficult to slay the princess and save the world without it. The door to the basement creaks open, revealing a staircase faintly illuminated by an unseen light in the room below. This is an oppressive place. The air feels heavy and damp a hint of rot filtering from the ancient wood. If the princess really lives here, slaying her is probably doing her a favor. Her voice carries up the stairs. Who's there? She sounds dangerous. It's almost as if she's the one in charge down here. Don't let it fool you. It's all part of the manipulation. Hi. Don't be a stranger. It's been so long since I've had any visitors. Come on down. You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. There's a heavy chain around her wrist, binding her to the far wall of the basement. She's so coldly beautiful. Is she really a threat to the world? Focus on the task at hand. And there you are. Are you here to kill me or something? I haven't decided yet. How about you drop the knife and the two of us just... talk? Look how reasonable she's being. We should just drop the blade and talk things out. Don't you dare. It's fine. We can decide what we want to do after we talk to her. Maybe she really is a monster. Killing someone in cold blood isn't very becoming of us. Drop it. <sighs> the blade tumbles out of your trembling hands and drops to the floor with an unceremonious clang. Thank you. Against your better judgment, you step forward to speak with the princess face to face. Unarmed. We'll be fine. I don't know what you're hoping to accomplish here, but I can assure you there's no reasoning with her. <sighs> Just make sure you don't forget about the blade on the floor. You're going to need it. So here we are. What an awkward start to a relationship. Yeah, it's, uh, <clears throat> pretty awkward. I know. I just said that. Now why are you here to kill me? I've been told things, but I'm not sure what to believe. Believe me. And do you think asking me what to believe is going to suddenly make everything crystal clear? Let's not pretend that's going to happen. 
As far as you're concerned, and as far as they're concerned, I'm going to say whatever I have to to get out of here. That's just the dynamic of our situation. I'm here because you're supposed to end the world. Don't just tell her that. <laughs> Is that why they threw me down here? But I don't want to hurt anyone. I like the world, I think. I don't remember much about it, to be honest. I've been down here a long time. Just how long has she been down here? If I'm supposed to be capable of ending the world, then how did I wind up here, chained to a wall? Have they told you why I'm allegedly so... dangerous? No. And if I'm being honest, I'm more inclined to trust you than inclined to trust them. Sooner or later, you'll understand that I have your best interests at heart. Hopefully sooner. How sweet. Now be a pal and help me get out of here, would you? We could figure out how to deal with them after I'm free. Examine the chains. I'll, uh, I'll see what I can do. You walk up to the chains binding the princess to the wall and give them a tug. They're large and heavy, far too solid for you to even imagine trying to break them apart. I'm guessing you don't have the key. Maybe it's somewhere upstairs. Doubtful. Whoever locked the princess away down here intended for her to never see the light of day. They wouldn't have just left the key to her chains somewhere in the cabin. I'm going to check upstairs. Maybe the key's still lying around somewhere up there. And if not, maybe I can find something to break you free. I'll be here. You attempt to make your way out of the basement, but the door at the top of the stairs slams shut. You hear the click of a lock sliding into place. Is someone else here? Try the door. You try the door, but it's locked from the outside. You're here to slay the princess, and you won't leave until the task is done. You make your way back to the bottom of the stairs. This would have been so much easier if you'd simply slain her like you were supposed to. Easier for whom? Easier for everyone. I heard the door slam. They locked you down here too, didn't they? The knife. Pick it up and cut me out of here. You won't like what happens if you do that. Save the princess. Against your better judgment, you place the blade against the princess's arm, just above the massive, unyielding chain. You cut into her flesh. The blade is sharp, and you make quick work of it. Before long, you're able to crack through bone, and she pulls the bleeding stub of her arm through the iron gauntlet. She didn't so much as utter a sound. Free from her bindings, the princess turns to face you, her fierce gaze meeting your eye. How is she so composed after losing an arm? It's like she isn't even bothered by it. Thank you. Now let's get out of here. Approach the locked door. No, we won't have any of that. The stakes are too high. You can't just let her escape into the world. No, I just can't let her escape into the world. As the princess approaches the bottom stair, your body steps forward and raises the blade. Wait, this isn't fair. You can't just do that. Watch me. Warn her. Stop that. I thought this was a little too easy. Your body lunges forward to sink the blade into her back, but the princess swiftly moves out of the way before you can connect. Stop it! Stop resisting me! I am trying to get you out of here alive! Resist. The blade. Move. The. Blade. You're doing your best to help me, aren't you? I can see the conflict in your eyes. I'll make this quick. 
she steps forward and pries the blade from your rigid hands. Maybe I'll see you in another life. And then she slits your throat with an almost clinical ease. Her face remains unchanged as she watches you collapse to the ground, blood flowing from your butchered neck. This is the end, isn't it? I'm afraid it is. Everything goes dark, and you die. I hope it was worth it. Chapter 2 The Prisoner You're on a path in the woods, and at the end of that path is a cabin. And in the basement of that cabin is a princess. You're here to slay her. If you don't, it will be the end of the world. I'm getting a terrible sense of deja vu. A terrible sense of deja vu? No, you don't have that. This is the first time either of us have been here. Don't forget what he did to us the last time around. I wouldn't trust a word out of his mouth. There's got to be a way out of here, for us and for the princess. We just have to keep trying. I'm inclined to agree. If he doesn't remember what happened last time, maybe it's best to keep it that way. You know I can hear you two, right? It's going to be a lot harder than you think to keep secrets from me. And as far as trying to help her goes, need I remind you how catastrophically dangerous she is to the world at large? I told you about the stakes of this situation less than a minute ago. This is more than just deja vu, though. I'm pretty sure this whole thing already happened. We could go back and forth on this forever, and it won't get you any closer to doing your job and saving the world. So let's just agree to disagree. Let's assume I'm telling the truth, and all this did already happen. Why should I listen to you? Why should I bother doing anything at all? Those are two very different questions, but fine. I'll indulge you if that's what it takes to get you moving. Let's say for a moment that this really is the second time you've met me, or at least a version of me. If you're back here, I'm assuming you died, which probably only happened because you didn't listen to me. The absolute irony. Well, that's one way to put it, I guess. You really don't remember what happened last time, do you? You practically forced the princess to kill us. That doesn't sound like the sort of thing I'd do, which is honestly all the more reason for you to not buy into whatever self-delusions the three of you are crafting. <sighs> but this is a thought experiment, so I suppose I'll continue to give you the benefit of the doubt. If I did practically force the princess to kill you, it was probably for a good reason. Did you try and free her? Did you say something really mean to me? Because if I really did what you said I did, you probably deserved it. I'm a professional, after all. Sure you are. Anyway, I believe your second question was, What's the point of doing anything? If you're asking that, it sounds to me like you're making the rather dangerous assumption that your actions last time around didn't have any consequences. What do you mean? Of course there weren't any consequences. You forced the princess to kill us, and now everyone's right back where they started. That sounds pretty consequence-free to me. Yes, but in this purely hypothetical scenario, that begs the question of how you got back here. Did time simply rewind itself, or were you instead transported to a different world entirely? If it's the latter, what do you think happened after you died? Do you think the people there lived happily ever after? Or do you think that the princess, left unhindered, brought about the end to everyone and everything, just like I told you she would? What a conveniently ambiguous group of things for her to ruin. For all we know, the princess left the cabin and never saw another soul. Oh, how I wish that were the case, but if the princess weren't a certain inevitable threat to the world, the four of us wouldn't be here. And yet, here we are. You're talking in circles. No, I'm talking in facts. 
proceed to the cabin. A warning before you go any further. She will lie, she will cheat, and she will do everything in her power to stop you from slaying her. Don't believe a word she says. Yes, yes, don't believe a word she says. Just go in, take the knife, and do what you're supposed to. Wink. Did you just say wink out loud? No, I didn't. Wink. Just ignore this clown and focus on the princess. Proceed into the cabin. The interior of the cabin is less a cozy woodland retreat and more like a dungeon. A few pathetic wisps of starlight attempt to illuminate the cold, uninviting stone walls, and thick, wrought iron bars barricade the windows, reminding anyone who enters that this is a prison. The only furniture of note is an iron table, bolted to the floor, a pristine blade perched on its edge. The blade is your implement. You'll need it if you want to do this right. Take the blade. You take the blade from the table. It will be difficult to slay the princess and save the world without a weapon. Good idea. Much better to be armed than to go in with blind hope alone. Enter the basement. The door to the basement creaks open revealing an old stone staircase. A few sputtering torches attempt to vaguely illuminate your path, dancing across glimmering patches of slimy moss on the stone steps. If the princess lives here, slaying her would probably be doing her a favor. Her voice, harsh but controlled, carries up the stairs. Is that a visitor I hear? Please, come downstairs. It's been a while since I've had company. Does she remember us? You walk down the stairs and lock eyes with the princess. She looks up at you, the heavy collar around her neck clanking loudly as she moves, the chains binding both her wrists to the far wall, joining the metallic chorus as she adjusts her hands in her lap. So much for cutting her out of here. Do you hear yourself right now? Cutting her out of here never should have been on the table. Have you noticed the empty chain on the wall? Odd that in a place where everything seems to serve a distinct purpose, there would be something so obviously useless. That was there last time too, wasn't it? It was. What an interesting development. Why don't you have a seat? The two of us should chat before you bury that thing in my heart. Sit with her. You step towards the princess, but she stops you before you get too close holding up one shackled hand. There is fine. I'd prefer we keep some distance until we've sorted this out. That's reasonable. We do have a weapon. Might as well put her at ease. Sit where you were told to sit. You do as she asks and sit on the floor, still a good distance away from her. Thank you. Now, what are your intentions for me? I've been here before. Am I the only one who remembers this? Oh, are we acknowledging that? I thought we weren't going to give away the game. But yeah, I remember. I guess what you said back in the woods really was true. As much as I would like to remain in denial, it's no use. This has complicated things. It's complicated things how, exactly? Ideally, this was supposed to be one and done. You go to the cabin, you heroically slay the princess, and in the process you save the entire world from being damned to oblivion. The situation right now, where you're getting a second shot at things, is a contingency. A contingency for what? For you failing, obviously. And you being here means that things are going to be a lot harder than they were. I really shouldn't say anything else, I'm just going to make it worse, just good luck. Now hold on, if you knew this could happen, why didn't you believe us back in the woods? Why lay out all those hypotheticals? We didn't have to talk in circles. 
I needed you to believe this was your first time here, even if that wasn't the truth. I hoped if I pushed back hard enough I could cram this seeping mess back into the bottle. And maybe I wanted to be the first version of me that you met. I didn't want to be confronted by the alternative. That's pathetic. I never said I wasn't. I get it. It would be pretty upsetting, wouldn't it? To know that you might not be the first version of yourself. At least we can remember what happened before. Seems like we should count ourselves lucky for that. Exactly, he gets it. You're lucky, so don't waste that luck by messing it up again. All right? Moving on. Why is it important for us to be ignorant? How is it ever helpful to be in the dark? The more I say, the more your mind will swim into dangerous waters. Even saying that is too much. Your success hinges on you having imperfect information. For the sake of the entire world, you need to accept that. I won't. Fine, but you won't get another word from me on the matter. Yeah, sure. We'll see about that. Just give it a rest, this isn't helping. Focus. This is a serious situation. You shouldn't be daydreaming. What happened after I died last time? Nothing happened. You died. I went upstairs. I couldn't leave. I found myself in a new place in chains again. More of them. And now you're back. Is that really all she knows? It's not like we have much of a clue about how things work. And she's probably even more in the dark than we are. You're looking at me like I might be hiding something. I'm not. I guess it's possible she really doesn't know anything. Maybe both of us are stuck in this loop without any idea why or how. That other chain on the wall, who is it for? I don't know, but you could always try it on. Maybe it'll fit. I hope I don't actually have to say this, but please don't lock yourself in chains. We need you ambulatory if you're going to save the world. We're gonna do it. Inspect the shackle. I wouldn't do that if I were you. And why is that? Do I even need to explain myself? It's a shackle and it's one without a key. Do you want to be stuck here like she is? And what? Is it going to lock the second we put our wrist into it? I don't know. Maybe it will. He doesn't want us to look at it. That's all the reason we need to investigate. But what if he's telling the truth? He isn't. I am. Inspect the shackle. <sighs> Against your better judgement, you approach the chain dangling from the far wall. The princess watches you with faux disinterest as you inspect it, though she can't fully hide her curiosity. I don't want to say what I'm supposed to say next. What is that supposed to mean? It sounds bad. Is it bad? Yes, it's bad. Come out and say it then. You're just wasting time. Fine. As you hoist the shackle, its heft shifts within your grasp, as if pulled by some odd magnetism. Before you can so much as blink, it practically leaps from your hands, snapping around your neck. And, as if your situation weren't bad enough, the same magnetism repels your blade, which is flung from your hand and sent skittering across the floor of the basement. Um, excuse me? Yes? Are we stuck here now? Yes. Huh, so it does fit. And I guess it doesn't like your knife. We're stuck here together, aren't we? That's funny. What are we supposed to do now? Can't even cut ourselves out. Guess we'll starve. That's horrible. It's not all bad. We learned a valuable piece of information. Not to touch things we're specifically told not to touch? No, 
that there's something special about this loose chain. It's clearly important. Did you know this was going to happen to me? No. So we're both stuck here? Yep. What should we do? Wait, I guess. Maybe something else will happen. Maybe not. Not one for small talk, are you? Nope. That's rude. Wait in silence. You and the princess wait in silence, though neither of you knows what you're waiting for. But you're waiting for something. You're waiting for anything. This is so boring. There must be something we can do to get out of here. There must be something we're missing. But there isn't. Time passes. It passes and passes and passes. And the basement of the cabin remains much the same. It is cold and silent. At least the world is safe. It isn't. You're stuck. Too far away from both the princess and your blade to do much of anything. But she's not ending anything. She's just sitting there. Her very existence is a threat. It harms everything around it. How exactly does that work? It just does. But your line of questioning is interrupted by the passage of even more time. And after that, even more time passes again. And let me guess, the cabin remains the same. If time is passing, the cabin can't be the same. Even if the differences are small, they have to exist. That's just how things work. I suppose you're correct. Things are changing. The differences are small at first, a bit of weathering here, a bit of erosion there. But then they get larger. And larger. Hey, have you noticed the basement changing? I don't like small talk. Remember? Still rude. Continue to wait in silence. You continue to wait in silence, and the cabin continues to change. The decay comes faster now. You can see earth through holes in the stonework, can watch lichen spread along the seams of the walls. That doesn't make sense. Has our entire concept of time changed? What happened to starving? We should have died by now if the rocks around us are starting to erode. She hasn't starved. I guess she hasn't. Even more silent time passes as you watch roots push themselves through the increasingly porous walls of the basement. Dirt seeps inside, flowing across the stone floor like a liquid, covering the ground and threatening to swallow you both. Time continues to pass, and pass, and pass, until suddenly, there are no walls, and then, and, I think he's gone. Would you look at that? We made it out of the cabin, and nothing bad had to happen to either of us. So this is the outside world. It's cold. But you don't get a chance to respond, nor will you ever. It's time to leave. Memory returns. She's gone. W where did she go? Should we try and find her? Is that a... Mirror? Why is it here? Why now? Approach the mirror. You approach the mirror. This... this doesn't feel right. It feels... different. Final. You're right. Part of me wants the truth, but something stronger is holding me back. Fear. The voices feel small, distant, as you approach. Gaze into your reflection. Silence as you reach forward. They're gone once again. The mirror always makes them leave. But you need to see what's in it. You've withered. 
you find yourself in the long quiet once again. I am a growing chorus of contradiction, a mass of tides ebbing and flowing all at once in more directions than my attention can bear to hold. To look at any one is to shift them all into something new, and to look away is to reshape them yet again. All of me is changing, and yet the rest of me is still the same. What do you think of this vessel? This one is cold and cynical. She has protected herself when others could not. She will make for a clever heart. Do not mourn her. She doesn't need to be protected any longer. I'm ready to go back. I will be here when it is time for us to meet again. Everything goes dark and you die.